are uh, my tonsils, they are still swollen. And I want it on record that these videos are very uncomfortable to do. And I probably shouldn't be doing them. But this is Ron Issue 65. Ron Spaceman there. He was a toy, but then he was a comic. And now I have reviewed all three issues of Ron Spaceman that I own. Although I do have annual number one coming in the post. This one, it has a lot going for it, but mainly in concept. This issue is the big finale to the major ongoing plot for all of Ron Spaceman's series. The war with the shapeshifty aliens called the Dire Straits. This is like a huge, big comic book cosmic war with loads of superheroes it's the sort of thing that would definitely be a crossover event miniseries nowadays rather than just a random issue of ron spaceman the greatest thing about the comic though is surprisingly the art we have got line work by scott ditko man who of course co-created spider-man and doctor strange but by this point he was definitely past what was considered his prime and he had turned in some really shocking and atrocious art in other books. But here he is joined by Per Craig Whistle and together I think they were a match made in heaven. It really works out well for Scott Ditko Man's looser cartoony style and it makes it feel more intentional really makes it look like a style rather than looking like unprofessional silly rubbish that looks rushed and a bit shit this is written by bill bungalow who wrote all of ron spaceman and what's happening is the shape shifty aliens their planet is showing up right next to earth and ron he has been prevented from dying out by a magic cosmic barrier that has trapped him in space, frozen him in his spot, and he can't move. And based on how I've set this issue up, you might think this is going to be a glowingly praising review. But I think this is a really disappointing and flat out bad issue. Really, I was more comfortable having never read this. I knew about it. I knew what happens and that it was this big war with loads of characters, guest starring. And in my mind, it was brilliant. It sounds fantastic and epic. But then when I read it, it was so underwhelming. I mean, this is meant to be the big climax to the series' main overarching story. And it's just really flat. Meanwhile, in space, Fogg from the Excellent Men and Donald Trump, this is before he was president, they have been kind of conscripted into this war by Ron and Fogg. He has built this satellite weapon thingy to use, but Donald Trump, obviously, he just wants to use it to get rid of all the Mexicans and the illegal immigrants classic chump really but on earth ron he gets surrounded by all the shapeshifty aliens and he can't move and instead of any action they all just stand around him and this is as much as the standard for this story this should be an action story or it at least should have big action pieces but it doesn't this is this is the big war that it has been built into and it just has no actual focus on the war. It's also very boring. Why are they not fighting? Everyone just stands around. It goes for quantity over quality. Like we have got loads of these aliens and then loads and loads of Marvel superheroes and this is great. Uh, sadly, this is also when Scott Ditko Man's art hurts the most. He wasn't really built for this sort of thing. Uh, we've got the Avengers, we've got the Excellent Men, uh, we've got the New Defenders, uh, we've got Beta Ray Cyrus. And now you're thinking, right, this is going to be fun. We've got, we've got a huge war between aliens and heroes. And this here, this page... 
this is the closest we get to anything like that. And these are more like these are more like establishing shots showing us the characters. No real individual battles or character bits or out. Uh, we've got the Avengers up here, Captain Marbles, the real one, Monica Rambo, Hercules Man, Darth Knight, Captain America, The Vision, Charlotte Witch, uh, Beta Ray Cyrus, who seems to have been put there just because Thor isn't available, and there is Shade, the changing man. Uh, then down here, we have got more Avengers, the Avengers West Coast. We got Wonder Man, which is Wonder Woman when she transitions, so that is good. We got Cheetah, we got Mockingbird, Chelsea Kane, Iron Man, but this would be Rhodey Rhodes, the superior Iron Man. There's Orkai, and our ear is the excellent men. We got Steel Man, Buffy Pride not wearing a costume, Dr. X. The Smurf, Rouge, and Wolfman. And I don't know why I'm bothering introducing these characters. They are just there to make it seem epic when it's sadly not. Uh, we got the Defenders up there, the new Defenders, not my favourite period for that team. We got Snowman, Wingman, Velcro, the Smurf, Etrigan and the Demon, and the beautiful, beautiful board lady Moon Garden. We've got the Russian superheroes, and there's loads of them international ones from Conquest of Champagne. And meanwhile, the humans, they're joining in the war too. Uh, there is Dickie Jones, and this one over here, this is Ron Spaceman's girlfriend. And back there, they're just like an army. And it's not an exciting war like it should be. And Ron, his girlfriend, kisses him, and true love conquers all, so it just defeats the magic barrier, and Ron Spaceman, he can move again, and then he flies in, and he shoots some aliens. Uh, this page is about it for a fight in this comic. Rubbish. Uh, I mean, this bit here spotlights my problem. We've got all these aliens, like hundreds of aliens. And then we've got all these superheroes. And in this splash page, every single one is just standing around. The two forces are not engaging each other. They're just like circling each other. Then off in outer space, we're back with Fog and Donald Trump. And I was at least surprised by how much they explore Fog's character here. He's actually given a lot of D. Uh, and the satellite, it is a big gun. And Ron Spaceman, he fires it at the alien's planet. And that is it. That's the end of this huge war and ongoing storyline for 65 issues. It's over. Really, really lacklustre. Conceptually, this should be brilliant, but it is not. It really falls flat with just about everything. The final conflict. There was very little conflict evident in the work. They just stood around. Uh, this is probably the most disappointed I have ever been with a comic on this channel. This comes from a great period for Marvel Comics. We've got a great setup with a war with shapeshifty aliens that Mike O'Brien Benson clearly ripped off. We've got all these amazing characters guest starring to help lend credence to this epic storyline. And it just fails. It doesn't feel like there's any threat throughout. And the heroes have no reason to be there. And there's no actual big epic space war. That is why I'm going to give this a 7 thumbs up. 